Well, guys, somebody else needs our help besides Tamar Braxton. Um, and before we get into it, guys, please subscribe to my channel, like, share, comment, do all that good stuff. And come on back here and let's have a real adult conversation about what's going on with Nick Cannon and Tamar Braxton, who seems to be suffering with some mental health issues due to a oppression in the industry and how black people are always selling out their souls just to have fame and fortune and a status in this world not realizing it can come back to bite them in the ass and put so much pressure on them that they begin to collapse from within so with that being said guys check this out and i'll be right back with the rest of my commentary so Tamar Braxton says, quote, I am a slave. I do not own my own life, my stories, my pictures, my thoughts or beliefs. I've asked my master to free me. I'm threatened and punished for it. The only way I see out of this is death. I will choose that before I continue to love like this. Please help me. So obviously she's crying out for help. Along with Nick Cannon, who just wants to check out of the planet, saying, y'all can have this planet. I'm out. What do you guys think about this? Is it a cry for help? Is it a mental health issue? Or we just need to talk about the black agenda that's been going on in this world against us for so long. And we have to include the ignorance of our people that keep walking into the traps willingly and unknowingly of the enemy what do you guys think about this down below let me know thank you all right guys so let's go ahead and get into tamar's and nick's intervention and let me know if you have any suggestions down below in the comments and we can talk about this live maybe later on or the next time i see you in the premiere or an upload or definitely down in the comments thank you very much All right, so what do you guys think so far? How are we doing with this intervention? I'm gonna go ahead and show you some extra post or whatever and um, let you form your own opinion about it and I'll be back with the rest of my commentary. Thank you. so what do you guys think so far how are we doing with this intervention i'm gonna go ahead and show you some extra post or whatever and um let you form your own opinion about it and i'll be back with the rest of my commentary thank you
Hey, welcome back for the rest of my commentary. So if you don't know, Tamar Braxton was recently hospitalized for a cocktail of some kind of prescription drugs, unbeknownst to me, and alcohol. I do not know what her preference and choice is. And Nick Cannon has been fired and let go from a lot of his contracts due to him standing up for the real Hebrew Israelites of this world today known as some of them nation of islams moors christians people in the islands of the seas as far as australia and hawaii and the americas north and south america and how you know some of the jews the ashkenazi jews over in uh, israel are more prejudiced toward us than white people and you know he called white people savages and got a lot of backlash from it her melanin is so powered and it connects us in a way that the reason why they fear black, the reason why they fear is because they, the lack that they have of it. They said, we want what you got because there's this mentality of the, we have to conquer. Right, right, right. right. We are having hate speech when it's never hate speech, when it's not. You right. can't be anti-Semitic when the Semitic, when, when we, we are the Semitic people, when we are the same people that you, who they want to be. That's our birthright. That's our birthright. We're in an interview with uh, Professor Griff, okay? So basically, I believe they're both crying out for help. And unfortunately, we have to stop feeling sorry for the choices people are making. Now, I care about Tamar dearly and Nick Cannon and supported them most of their careers. But at the same time, black people have allowed themselves to get into Hollywood and... Uh, abuse themselves because of the fame the fortune the greed the clout the the money the lifestyle not realizing that they haven't been with building wealth spiritually and mentally physically and you know inheritances to their children's children a lot of the fortune and fame people have in hollywood is contracted out it's on borrowed time it's loaned um it could be repossessed taken canceled and fired at any time and with the weight of all of that pressure some people pretty much go on to want to commit suicide allegedly what rumors are saying about Tamar Braxton. Now, I'm not really sure if that's the case. Sometimes people drink and forget they take meds. I'm on Flonase and Loratadine, and I have a little Moscato right here. But again, the fear of mixing it, which I don't really believe is going to hurt me, but you never know at any time when your body can have an allergic reaction or have a little bit too much of a mixture in you that can... Uh, be cross camp contaminated and cause harm to your body and cause you to be unresponsive like they uh tamar's uh fiance and boyfriend david found her the other day but there's reports out there that says he thinks she tried to commit her commit suicide and if you see in one of these posts she says it's hard to love like this whatever that means and i told you guys when tamar cut her hair couple of years back and when uh, Tiffany Haddish just did it recently and I brought Tamar up again when people say they're captive and cry out for uh, help like this through posts somebody close to them reach out and get help now we saw Nene you know said reach out to your friends and get help and things of that nature we saw Tamar cry out about how she's a slave her thoughts her mind her lifestyle, her her, her her beliefs, nothing belongs to her. Um, and how, you know, we saw her say how she gets 75% less than the Kardashians. We also saw her say how she's going to fight for her family because white nationalism, that's the executives of the world, especially Hollywood, Zionists, um, the alleged Jews over there, and all these other people that side with the BS and know the truth about us and know how oppressed we have been, not only with pay since June 19, 1865, but prior to that when we had to work for free while other races got 100% more money than we did doing the same job, if they did the job. 
they probably just sat back and watched this do the job. That's why I said black lives do not matter to some races. Only matters when it comes to labor. So that should be changed to black labor matters because now you have all lives matter campaign fighting against black lives matter. When will black lives ever matter? Alone, stand alone by themselves, nations as we were in the Bible prior to all of this slavery and BS for another race to feel supreme and, you know, grab people by the balls and treat them like shit in Hollywood so that they can leave an inheritance to their family. But yet, Tamar, who have just as much personality and character in her family and on We TV Network with the Braxton family values, uh, more so than the Kardashians get paid 75% less, y'all. So going over to Nick Cannon, I did a video prior, a couple videos back saying, you know, when Nick had said what he said, and I'm going to try to insert it here somewhere, Nick pretty much said the truth. Our melanin is so powered and it connects us in a way that the reason why they fear black, the reason why they fear is because they, the lack that they have of it. They said, we want what you got because there's this mentality of the, we have to conquer. Right, right, right. right. We keep having hate speech when it's never hate speech, when it's not. You right. can't be anti-Semitic when the Semitic, when, when we, we are the Semitic people, when we are the same people that you, who, who they want to be. That's our birthright. That's our birthright. I'm worried about losing his fame and fortune. And before I could do a video called and I was going to title it, if you don't stand for Nick Cannon, you'll fall for anything. I still feel that way, even though he doubled down and kind of backtracked and uh, backpedaled and pee popped around here, right? I pretty much still feel like if you don't stand for what Nick Cannon had said before he apologized about it, you're going to keep falling for the oppressor and what Tamar and Nick and Viola Davis and so many other people are speaking out about. Now, you remember when Michael Jackson started speaking out, they killed him with propofol, okay? And, and, and when other people in Hollywood started speaking out, they came up there too. So, guys, you be careful, all right? But uh, the thing of the matter is, every time somebody speaks the truth against the devil, whether it's towards God's people or the mistreatment in Hollywood, which is against God's people, because definitely Tamar and Nick are both God's people. But unfortunately, God's people need to repent and turn from their wicked ways so Hollywood won't get the opportunity to abuse them anymore. If anybody agree with me, please put it down in the comments right now. So basically, you know, when it comes to Nick, Nick has gone on to lose Viacom, CBS, I believe Viacom on BET, what's going to happen with the real husbands of Hollywood. We know that he does not own the rights, which is very alarming and strange and bewildering to me. Something that I will marvel at that Nick Cannon does not own Wild and Out. Guys, if I ever get a position to be there, these people in Hollywood won't have to worry about mistreating me because I'm going to make a way for my community to get there without needing them. And see, that's the problem. They own everything. If you don't begin to make your own resources and civilization again, you're never going to get equality within their civilization. And you're never going to get to promote your creativity. Since the beginning of time, the white race has stole everything that black people have ever invented. Even the straightening comb. And God knows they don't need a damn straightening comb. So I was kind of alarmed and disappointed when I saw Nick Cannon go ahead and make that apology. I'm like, you can't apologize for who God created you to be, such as the indigenous Indians and in, 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 in 12 Hebrew nations of the world. Ah, oh, come on, somebody. So with that being said, guys, I just want to say that, you know, I listened to Impressive this morning and she basically said Nick Cannon should have shut up and not said anything. And I'm here to say, no disrespect to Impressive, go over and support her, watch her videos. It was it was an amazing video. 
But I think that we, with the following like that, almost 800,000, Nick Cannon with his following, everybody that was following Nick Cannon up until the point where he says he let people down and let down a whole... and let down a whole community and things of that nature. The 12 tribes of Israel. I mean, we rooting for somebody to just stand up and say, hey. And I try to do that over here, but you got to look good like Nick Cannon. You got to be a Malcolm X. You got to be a Maya Angelou or please don't be no Oprah. But you know what I'm talking about. And you got to have a certain fame and fortune and status and following for people to believe that God sent you as a messenger and that's another thing that's hurting our community because so many people have been saying stop, get your own labels get your own uh, 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 studios like Tyler Perry uh, you know, for what it's worth, now he just needs to promote the truth, make some of them Bible stories with black cast and uh Cause I'll help you write it. I mean, I'll be over here like, damn, if I had Tyler Perry Studios, we can take all the movies that they made white about the Bible and turn them into black. And the first one I would do is called Genesis the First. Okay? So with that being said, and Lord have mercy. I have a picture somewhere if I still have it, but all the men are buff, got dressed, and they are sexy as hell at the table with the Messiah Christ. And they all kind of look like me. Like if I get in the light, I look a little brighter. If I come back, I look a little darker. That's the beauty of my race. And that's what Rick, uh, Nick was trying to tell you all when it comes to them being cruel and inhumane to us. It's about our color. It's about our melanin. But baby, it's also about our bloodline. See, if it was about Ham, the Egyptians would have suffered at the hands of the oppressor more than us. But they were in on it a little bit, so we're not all hermetic. And when Nick says we're Shemitic and we can't be anti-Semitic against ourselves, he's telling you the truth. The only way you're anti-Semitic against yourself is if you Christians and people thereof stop and refuse to, to believe that you are the people of the Bible, the Hebrew Israelites that are lost sheep out here being led to the slaughterhouse to be slain and unfortunately even by people like Nick Cannon and Tamar Braxton who have this following now for some of the following they're going to think it's okay to mix medication and drink because they want to be like Tamar, they want to be a Tamartian and for Nick Cannon it's going to be okay to stand up in your job for the followers of Nick Cannon and your boss treats you like shit like a slave master on the, on the plantations thereof in the employment industry, right? And all of a sudden, you say, wait, that's not right. You get fired, and then you want to go back and uh, kiss the boss's ass for your job. And we have to stop doing that, people. If you truly believe in any faith that God should supply all your needs according to your riches in Christ Jesus, one of your riches is to stop being oppressed. And if you have to stand up to people and speak your truth and get fire behind it, then you're winning with God for the sake of the kingdom of heaven's sake, right? Not for the sake of how we're going to take care of ourselves tomorrow. Because remember, God says the lilies of the fields, the birds of the air, they don't sow anything. They don't win no souls. So if he can take care of them, he can take care of you. He can take care of me. He can take care of us, okay? So what else I want to say to wrap this up? Basically, again, let me just reiterate. Nick wants to be off this planet. So many th things could be joking, but I don't think this is anything to joke about. This society and the world has a way of reading in between the lines and, 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 and seeing posts and comments of what they really are, seeing the truth in them. And then other people don't want to believe that these people may be allegedly seeking help because they want to take their lives. So we'll brush things under the rug. We'll say, oh, no, 
that that that's not gonna happen they're too strong or they're too famous but these are the people who have and suffer with the most depression a lot of people can't handle the fame and then it comes to the point where the fame wants to run out and you realize that the fame is running out but you're stuck you're still somebody's slave in the industry and you owe them a lifetime of work that you may never see the money for as Tamar is saying about being 75% less paid than the Kardashians, having white executives control and manipulate um, y'all, uh, her and people like Nick being in Hollywood or not being in Hollywood. Um, basically how, you know, she wants to take care of her family and save her family and fight for her family because of the injustices of equal opportunity and pay in Hollywood, feeling that her family is just as more valuable and equal to the Kardashians, if not better. And again, in Nick's situation, well, let's just say on Tamar's behalf, I didn't really see much support for Nick, because I think, again, with him double down and then turning his situation around with that apology, he may have lost some favor in the eyes of the black community, but still, what he said was true. Her melanin is so powered and it connects us in a way that the reason why they fear black, the reason why they fear is because they, the lack that they have of it. They said, we want what you got, because there's this mentality of the, we have to conquer. Right, right, right. We hear having hate speech when it's never hate speech, when it's not. You right. can't be anti-Semitic when the Semitic when we, we are the Semitic people when we are the same people that you who, who they want to be that's our birthright that's our birthright take that back and take that away from him he does have some light in him but again like the Bible says when the work cares of the world come along and your job is in jeopardy you throw that word out the window to save your lifestyle instead of standing on the word of god and being strong so with that being said let me go ahead and just wrap this up really really quick that um in both cases tamar and nick cannon seem to be dealing with mental health right now crying out as i was saying i didn't see much support for nick cannon but mariah carey stepped up and did a post um uh, Viola Davis stepped up and did a post who recently came out and uh, did an interview as well about basically not being paid enough in Hollywood and she's sick of it. They should have been sick of it when they first signed on. People have the opportunity to tell these demons and devils and other races of authority and power, no, I'm not going to do it. You want this kind of entertainment, paint your damn face black, and you try to put on this act that I can do. Until then, pay me what it's worth. Bottom line, they're going to pay you. They're going to be running behind you, giving you what you want. Just read the contracts in the fine lines to make sure they don't own your thoughts, your life, your stories, your beliefs, and all what uh, Tamar says the masters that she dealt with in Hollywood control and own over her. And once these demons get your thoughts and your beliefs, that's when you want to commit suicide and not live anymore. Because that's what these demons do. So guys, you let me know what you think down below. You let me know about this whole entire situation with Tamar Braxton allegedly wanting to take her life. Was it just a mix-up? Did she not realize how much she was drinking, consuming? Some medications say, please don't drink at all with medication. Some alcohols are just toxic because you got to remember there's spirits roaming through those alcohols as well. And I'm telling you, the demonic spirits and medication and all this don't mix. You cannot feed demons medication, whether it's pain, whether it's anger, whether it's hostile, whatever your pain is. I mean, these things have to be dealt with spiritually. 
And it doesn't matter how much Tamar breaks and could be on TD Jake's show and, and y'all will fix my life until Tamar decides to fix her inner her and stop allowing herself to feel captive to the point where she has to cut off her hair, which is her glory. No matter how long, how short, how nappy, how kinky, how straight it is, the Bible says it's a woman's glory. So we have to take into consideration that there's something more sinister going on within Tamar Braxton and within Nick Cannon. He must be feeling some kind of way to say he let down the whole community. See, it's all fun and games when you are wilding out talking about pick up and kill it and kill it and kill it. But until we pick up and kill the truth, that is the mad fact of the matter. We are the Hebrew Israelites. There are savages in the world that is, has been brutally sat, uh, being cruel and inhumane to us since for a lifetime. That there are races, white Jews and other races against us. Uh with hatred and war in their heart against us until we admit that our melanin caused them all kinds of jealousy to be racist until we admit that Deuteronomy 7 and 6 says God chose us over them that would make them racist until we realize that um, we don't need them to freaking survive and can slowly start segregating ourselves away from the racist people against us who keeps causing us the most pain. If they want to be the Jews over there, why can't we be the Jews over here without being fired, without being persecuted, without being killed, still and destroyed? In the days of the Hebrew Israelites and those babies under two years old that even Herod wanted to kill once upon a time. It's still being done today. And Nick was telling y'all the truth. Martin Luther King was telling you the truth. And so he dumbed down and sold your souls to the burning hell. I'm not going to dumb down and sell your souls to the burning hell. I'm going to preach this thing to the days of Jesus return or until the Lord calls me home or until they decide to track me down and take me out like they do everybody else that come bringing good news for, for, for black people this should be good news it shouldn't be a heartache to hear somebody talk like this this should be waking up your spirit to be free but just like the messiah who came to open up blind eyes and he, uh, op heal blind eyes and open deaf ears it was rejected then and it, it will it will it is being rejected now and it will forever be rejected by some people like Tamar and Nick Cannon who we can't judge if they have a relationship with the Most High God but we know something demonic is working in them and working through them and it's possibly the powers that be that they sold their souls to to be in Hollywood Holly weird Holly ain't shit and whatever else you want to call that place that knows how to destroy God's people really of any race but especially black people who are so needy and greedy for attention acceptance uh, reparation making a lot of money in this world and, and don't really care how they get it even if Satan is sitting on the top of the blessing they'll still take it All right, and sell other people in their race, community, and families out for it. So, guys, let me know what you think about this whole entire situation. I am going to go ahead and end it here, guys. You know my spiritual ears stay. And I want you guys to comment on this video. I want you guys to engage on this video and let me know how I did on this video. Let me know what you would do about what you heard Tamar said, how Viola Davis and uh, Mariah Carey thinks prayers is going to answer it. But black people have been praying for 2,000 years now and nothing has changed as far as equality and civil rights. So there has to be some other solution. And if you guys want to talk about it down below, 
let's get into that conversation. Also, what do you feel about Nick Cannon and and his whole entire, yes, we are the black people, yes, we are God's chosen people, but oh my God, I'm sorry, I need my job, I need my wild and out, I need this, that, and the third. When he's been in the industry so long, you think he would have bought some of those people out or started his own civilization of Hollywood so that there's equality amongst his people. So it always brings me back to house nigga feel nigga situation. People are going to make it into the, 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 the seating table of other races that have the power and authority that Tamar talks about as executives. And other people aren't. But when those people make it in, do they try to make a way for all of us? Or it's only until they get in trouble that they look back on their community and look back on God and say, please help me. Guys, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Have a blessed day and thank you so much for listening. Peace. Alright guys, so I can't let you leave without hearing exactly what Nene Leak said. Quote, when you are a strong person, you manage stress differently. People tend to judge the outside strength on the inside abilities to cope. A lot of strong people cry in the dark and hurt alone. I talked to Tamar often, spoke to her yesterday, and tried to uh, pull her through this moment. Spoke to her and David today. I say that to say this. Check on your strong friends. Try not to judge so much. Know that there are people being treated wrong for real. And it's really painful. I know Tamar is going to get through this. But please pray for her strength. And with that being said, Father God, we lift Tamar up to you we commend her spirit to you her mind her body her soul her thoughts her beliefs her stories all that the master or oppressor may have taken from tamar over the years in the industry the abuse that her family suffered at the hands of the white executives the inferiority and uh Uh, when it comes to supremacy in the industry where white families doing less than black families get paid just as much and as Viola Davis has said once before that she put in a lot of work more so than white women and compared some people to um, herself and the demons aren't gargoyles they're not men with pointy noses and ears. They're other people's desires for your life. People who don't see you. People who stereotype you. People who take your pathology, your complexity, everything away from you. How you have to step forward, and I stand in solidarity with them, okay? What they're getting paid, which is half of what a man is getting paid, well, we get probably a tenth of what a Caucasian woman gets. And I'm number one on the call sheet. And then I have to go in and I have to hustle for my work. That's what I feel like I'm doing when I demand what I feel. Listen, I have a more than a 30-year professional career. I had, I had a friend who said, yeah, but Viola, your career is better than my career. I said, yeah, but you can't compare me to you. Because once again, I got the Oscar. I got the Emmy, I got the two Tonys, I've done Broadway, I've done off-Broadway, I've done TV, I've done film, I've done all of it. I have a career that's probably comparable to Meryl Streep, Julianne Moore, let's Sigourney Weaver, they all came out of Yale, they came out of Juilliard, they came out of NYU. They had the same path as me, and yet I am nowhere near them. Not, not as far as money, not as, as far as job opportunities, that, you know, you do the work from now on. Something I said in the beginning of this video. So, guys, let me know what your whole entire thoughts are about this whole situation. And, guys, let the, let's get this conversation going down in the comments. I greatly appreciate it. God bless you, and may God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. May his countenance rest in you, and his shalom peace be all around you. 
Now you guys see Viola Davis in this role in The Help, right? And hear what she has to say about it. And let me know if this is another case of someone in Hollywood, such as a black woman, regretting the fact that they may have taken roles to hurt the black community instead of help us. And with that being said, let me know what you think about Viola Davis, Tamar Braxton, and Nick Cannon on everything we talked about here today. Thank you.